Through theatre of science fashion, uh, I have to go and grab something off my printer. It's just like a real lesson in a classroom. But look, I got a new toy. Egg timer. So I'm going to turn this over and when the egg timer's finished, then the lesson will begin. I know, right? It's going to keep me right. Wait, you're still... It's better. Okay. Won't be long. Loving my new system. I've got a minute. Have you got, because um, I haven't flashed you the holding screen like I usually do, have you got two pencils and sellotape and scissors and a candle and a way of lighting the candle? That is what we need today. And then we'll, uh, we'll get, I must admit this system works better on Facebook where there are comments. Oh no, but I know who's watching. I know that Tiger and Bird are here. Hello, because you were super organised and you commented on Facebook. And I know that Bastion is here. Hello, Bastion, who made me this paper and wrote a message on it. Amazing. Right, so now I've said hello to you. If you want to say hello, there is a post on Facebook right now saying, please say hello to me because I'm live on YouTube so you can go over there, but don't go now because the lesson has started. Right. Hello everybody! Hello, I am Lara, this is Theatre of Science and it's the IGCSE lessons, it's lesson seven on waves. So we've got another six lessons on waves until the summer holidays and then we will have completed waves and we're doing about energy sources like solar panels and all that stuff. But yeah, I'm excited about this one. We are doing about diffraction. So a quick and kind of slightly tedious recap, which I need to do before we get started. We have been learning in these lessons about different kinds of waves. This is a transverse wave, yeah? It moves like this. We've been learning how light is a transverse wave and uh, ocean waves are a transverse wave. And we've been talking about longitudinal waves as well. You remember? We'll do more about those next week because we're learning about sound next week. And sound is a longitudinal wave where you've got areas of, of sort of squishedness, areas of compression and areas of rarefaction, like areas of the opposite of squishedness, spread outness. Longitudinal wave, for example, a sound wave. Transverse wave, for example, light and ocean waves. But today, when I draw light waves, I'm, I'm just gonna draw them like this, as straight lines. Just because when you talk about diffraction, it's just what you do, it just shows the effect more easily. So when I'm drawing waves like this, that distance there, one line is like the wave front, you know, like on the ocean, like the kind of, the crest of the wave. So that distance there is the wave length, which is, oh, which way around is it? It's that, isn't it? The symbol for wavelength is lambda. That's all you need to know, just in case that was going to be confusing. So that is now a light wave, and that is the wavelength. So that would be a shorter wavelength. You get it. Okay, let's, let's get started on this activity, which is slightly hit and miss, to be perfectly honest with you. What you've got to do is get two pencils <clears throat> on just one of the pencils, you have to wrap some sellotape around each end of it. So just around the top and around, not on the little pointy bit, but just around the bottom there. Wrap it around about three times. I don't know, I've been doing three times on Facebook. It hasn't worked magnificently well. Maybe I'll go four. Oh, I, just, I just don't know. Do three and a half. So just wrap a bit of sellotape around the top of the pencil and then cut it off and then do the same at the bottom of the pencil. And then what we have to do is hold both the pencils together to make a little, a tiny little slit. That's the idea. So you can kind of squeeze the pencils if you've done too much that so that's okay. And then we'll light a candle and we'll look at the light of the candle through the slit of the pencil and hopefully we will see diffraction. <laughs> but while you are finishing off sellotaping two ends of a pencil, I will uh, explain what diffraction is using these little signs what I made. You ready? <clears throat> All waves can be reflected, refracted and 
diffracted. So hopefully you know what reflection is now, right? It's just like waves, but we've talked about light, but it could be any wave bouncing off a surface. Uh, refraction is light sort of traveling through a boundary, isn't it, into a different material and maybe slowing down or speeding up, that's refraction. So probably changing direction as well. But diffraction, what, what is it? It's the whole point of today's lesson. When light or waves, any waves, pass through a narrow gap, they spread out like this. This is diffraction. So you've got waves, tiny little gap, the waves get to the gap and they all spread out. That's what diffraction is. You're welcome. Please note that the frequency and the wavelength of the wave do not change, okay? So I've told you that the, the gaps between the lines, that's the wavelength of that wave. The wavelength is the same on both sides. Even when it's spreading out, this wavelength is still the same. But you might also want to know, I don't think you need this for your GCSE actually, um, but just out of interest, the, the amplitude of the wave, like the height if you like, uh, that does change because the wave is, is spreading out, so it's sort of losing energy. So the amount of waves per second and the wavelength stays the same, but actually, the, the end, just a little FYI, the amplitude does change, it's spreading out. The end. Thank you for coming to my lesson on directions. <laughs> Not the end. It is my job now to uh, ask you loads of questions so that you realise that what sounds simple is actually quite complicated, um, more complicated, and work out which bits you don't understand. Okay. If you're allowed to use matches, then light your candle. Uh, if you need adult supervision, get adult supervision. Make someone else do it for you. It's hard to learn and watch telly and wrap sellotape around pens and deal with fire at the same time. So yeah, I've got my candle. Now all we do is, <laughs> first of all, we'll have the, the pencils uh, uh, parallel with the table, right? Horizontal. You, you push the pencils together so you get a tiny little slit. You have to hold the pencils about two centimetres away from your eye, so really close to your eye, and then you look at the candle through the slit. And hopefully, just chucked it away. Hopefully we should see this happening. So we have, if you imagine that this is one of the pencils on the top and that's one of the pencils on the bottom, this tiny little slit is where light from the candle is gonna travel through the slit in our pencil, and we, you should see the candle light turn into a line. So when we've got our pencils horizontal, the light's gonna hit the slit and it's gonna spread out. So you should see a, like a long line of light. I'm laughing because this hasn't worked very well on Facebook so far. Works better the second time and this is the third time. So let's see, if you're not doing it, um, you can have a look at this and see how I fare. You got that? Sorry, get that. Just need some more business cards that have the wrong email address on. There we go. And an old matchstick. No, no expense bed, spread no expense. Right, pencils side by side, moving them over to the, come on. Oh, oh, hey, that was, did you see that? Yeah, come on, that's, wow. Oh, well done YouTube, it's always better on YouTube. Is that, has that not gone a bit long? It's not perfect. So I'm squeezing the pencils. Oh, guys. Oh, thank you for sharing this with me. Ugh. <laughs> Only you understand how exciting this is. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Sorry, it's just, you don't know how hard I failed at this on Facebook yesterday. So I'm squeezing the pencils and I must have got the slit just about right. The, the light is really spreading out, isn't it? Hey. So if you turn the pencils the other way around now, so they're pointing at the table, and try that again, you should see the light go the other way. Um, <laughs> it's finding the slit, finding the candle. Yeah, uh, I think this is probably the bit where I should just take this to the bank and cut. No, it, oh my goodness, we've even got another candle there. Did you see that? Okay, this is, it's a hard, it's a balance on theory of science always between like not giving up and getting the best result I can get, but also not boring you to tears. Okay, that's awesome. And I'm leaving it there. So cool. Don't throw pencils at the candle. It's not a good idea. Right, come back up here. Um, wow, that was, that was great, she says about her own activity that she found online. Um, so hopefully I have kind of slightly proved to you <clears throat> that diffraction is a real thing. Are you okay with what was happening there? If that's one pencil, that's another pencil. Light travelled through the tiny little gap between our pencils 
and um, when the pencils were like that it came through and spread out long ways and when the pencils were pointing upwards it came out and spread through the other way. You can get a very similar effect if you have eyelashes and a light bulb in your house. Close your eyes now so that you can barely see through them, just close, really nearly close them and then look at a light bulb and you get exactly the same effect. <laughs> it's not a great look for me but I can see that my light bulb has turned into a strip of light. So that's diffraction as well. Right, so if diffraction happens, and hopefully we have just proved to ourselves that it does happen, my question to you is, it's just me stabbing the screen, there we go. Why can't we see around corners? Bear with me, right? So here's an apple. <clears throat> Here is light traveling from the apple uh, through, let's say, an open door. Let's say our gap is a door in our house. Um, the light, travels through the open door and it spreads out, right? So if, if I was where this eyeball is, like behind the wall in my house, surely the light would get to my eye. We've talked about this before. This light is carrying information off the apple and goes through the open door, it spreads out and it hits my eye. So why, if you're standing in your room and the door is open, can't you see stuff that is through the door? Well, uh, it's because waves only diffract a lot, like really spread out when the gap is small about the same size as the wavelength of the wave or smaller. Light only spreads out, or waves in general, only spread out a lot when the gap is about the same size as the wavelength <coughs> or the gap is even smaller. So light has a very small wavelength, okay? So here I have drawn my diagram with the smaller waves. So what happens here is that the, the wavelength is very small, so the gap is kind of massive, so in, we don't really get diffraction and it looks more like this. Because you're IGCSE students, I am gonna tell you, technically, there is always a tiny little bit of diffraction, always, not enough that you would notice, but there's always a little bit of it. So if you're drawing a diagram, then draw it like this, okay? The light is almost not spreading out, but it is a teeny tiny little bit. I have seen exam questions where you would get a mark for knowing that that was true. All right, teacher question that I'm very proud of. Can you think of a wave that can diffract through doors? Can you think of a situation where this is true? What could be here where waves do get to an open door and then spread out? Tiger, bird, bastion. I know you lot are watching, so, <laughs> so you're the ones that I'm going to be bullying for answers. Um, sounds, did you get that? There you go, if your ear was behind the door, you would be able to hear the sound, wouldn't you? And why is that? It's because sound has a much longer wavelength than light. A sound wave is actually about the same size as the door, so it does diffract really well, it spreads out. If you like pianos, middle C on the piano has a wavelength of about 78 centimetres, which is obviously incredibly similar to a door. All right, Shall we see how well you've understood that? So first of all, just to hammer it home, diffraction can happen to all waves. I've got a beautiful picture here of the ocean, obviously, with its, with its transverse waves. And then there's a gap here in the land, which must be about the same size. It's, in, it's similar enough to the wavelength of the waves that we've got this lovely uh, diffraction pattern happening on the other side. So here is a question for you. I must admit, you know, you lot know this stuff doesn't come entirely naturally to me. I would have to get this question wrong and then probably get another couple of questions wrong before I really understood. So this is brain exercise. Don't panic if you haven't got it yet. But water waves travel through a hole in a rock and make the pattern shown. So you've got kind of like a rock pool, but in the rock pool are basically lots of little rainbows, aren't there, of waves. You've got a kind of tiny little rainbow shaped wave and then a bigger one behind it and a big one behind it, a big one behind it. So uh, if you've got the printout from my Facebook group, you could put a, a cross on the photo where the hole must be, or you could just think about it. We've got waves coming through a hole in a rock, making this pattern of little rainbows. Where must the hole be? And if one wavelength is three centimetres, which of these statements is probably correct? The hole is probably three centimetres or smaller, or the hole is probably three centimetres or larger. Explain your answer.
you have to remember what, about what light does when it comes through a door and what sound does when it comes through a door. All right, let's have a look then. Well, um, hopefully you've got the, the whole, it must be here, right? You should probably just know that without even thinking about it, because that's like where the centre of the rainbows are. So that must be where the waves are coming through and then they're spreading out and they're diffracting on the other side. So I don't know if you got that that was the hole. And the answer is the hole is probably about three centimetres or smaller. Again, it, I think it's going to take some of you quite a while to grasp this because it would me. Um, I've put the waves are diffracting a lot. So the gap is probably about the same size as their wavelength or smaller. Basically, it's this situation. It's sound coming through a door. The gap is small in relation to the wavelength. It's not this situation with the light and the door where the gap looks huge compared to the wavelength because the wavelength is very small. It makes the gap seem massive. So the gap's got to be small. I, f I think I find this, I find it a bit confusing because obviously it's not just that the gap is small or large. It's how big the gap is compared to the wavelength. So the, the gap has got to be small kind of compared to the wavelength. So I started thinking about our light candle pencil activity and I was a bit like, Wait, I don't get it. So have, have a look at this, because I haven't actually showed you this yet, and it's good. We've talked a lot about electromagnetic waves so far. We've talked about how light is just one kind of electromagnetic wave with a certain wavelength, but radio waves and microwaves and infrared, they're basically all light waves. Um, here's the different wavelengths, with, but with a nice chart that NASA have done. So have a look, please. Um, the length of radio waves is about the same as the height of a building, so it can be tens of thousands of metres. Uh, can radio waves, certainly thousands of metres. Um, microwaves, sort of roughly the size of like a human or butterfly. Infrared waves are about a needle point. Visible light waves are really teeny tiny. They're like the size of these little cell, ask a biologist, I don't know, but they're very, very small. Ultraviolet waves are the same size as molecules. So if that's true, if visible light, if that wavelength is really small, how did our activity work? The red light, which is the long, has the longest wavelength of all the lights, has a wavelength of about 700 nanometers, right? Teeny tiny. For example, a human hair is about 80,000 nanometers. So if you picture the gap between our pencils, it was about the same as a human hair, wasn't it? Like surely massive compared to the wavelength of red light. So if we've got a massive gap and a teeny tiny wavelength, how did we end up seeing refraction? Well, um, yeah, the answer is it actually wasn't, the light wasn't diffracting that much. There are ways you could have smaller gaps and get it to diffract a lot more. This is, a, a, this is not supposed to be like a cheesy advert. It just works out incredibly well, doesn't it? If you support me, if you are sending me five pounds a month and paying my wages to fund these lessons, I have sent you what I have been calling rainbow glasses, but they are in fact uh, diffraction glasses. They've got the lenses just look like clear plastic, but this is actually something called a diffraction grating. So it's basically teeny tiny little strips and the gaps between the strips are about 900 nanometers. So wavelength of red light, about 700, gaps, 900 nanometers. So th these are much smaller than the pencil. So when you look at a candle through this diffraction grating, you should see a lot more spreading out, right? Because the, the gap is much smaller. So the smaller the gap compared to the light, the more it spreads out. I'll show you. Not as like an advert, but you know, if you're compelled to have these, then do, do feel free to support me on coffee after this lesson. Do, 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 do. Look at that! Beautiful, eh? Oh, it's just so lovely. Oh, wow, gorgeous. Again, I don't know, this is just the best one so far that I've done this lesson. Um, so obviously we've got far more spreading out, right? The waves have spread out so much that we can see all the colours of the rainbow that we know white light is made of. Uh, please notice as well that red light has spread out the most. God, that is so pretty. So the, can you see that the red light is sort of on the outside? It's spread the furthest away from the candle and the bluey violety light is the closest. Uh, I'm not going to tell you why that is. I want you to work it out. It does work on light bulbs as well, by the way. There you go. And it's the same, right? The red light is on the outside. Why? Well, 
uh, yeah, I'm hoping that you, you might be able to tell me. Here's a photo that I found. Uh, never look at the sun. Do you absolutely never look at the sun through any kind of diffraction grating or with any other way apart from eclipse glasses? But let's say a scientist has taken a photo of the sun through a diffraction grating. Why does the wavelength of red light mean it spreads out the most? So I've just told you that red has the longest wavelength. Why is it that red light spreads out the most when you put it through a diffraction grating? Have you got it? It's because red light has the longest wavelength, so the gaps in the diffraction grating are the smallest in comparison to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've tried to explain it further. Like, how a small car seems smaller to a tall person, but a child would find it perfectly comfortable. So the gap seems bigger to the violet light. Is that right? I'm just gonna point you at me and wave my arms a bit to help your understanding. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean, right? It's like, yeah, if uh, the car, the size of the car doesn't change, but if a tall person gets into it, the, the car feels smaller. And if a child gets into it, the car feels fine. It's the same with the diffraction grating gap, right? The red light is has a longer wavelength, so the red light is like, oh man, this diffraction grating is so small and spreads out a lot. Whereas the violet light is like, I don't really see what the problem's about and spreads out less. Is that okay? Same, same with the door. So the wave, the sound wave is long, so it really sees the door and has to squeeze through and spreads out a lot. Whereas the light is teeny tiny, barely even sees the door. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> okay, so light uh, and waves in general don't only diffract when they go through little gaps. Um, they also diffract when they hit, when they hit objects, say buildings. It's, it's very similar. It's just instead of being a gap, you just kind of chop the top part off. I will show you a picture using uh, radio waves as an example. Here we go. So radio waves can be thousands of meters long, so they can diffract around hills like this, all right? So it's, it's just the same principle. You can imagine like another object here, and we, it's just kind of half, half a gap, if you like. So imagine that the wavelength of this radio wave is like 100 meters, and the height of this hill is about 100 meters, or it could be smaller, yeah? So like the gap could be smaller and you'd still get diffraction, the hill could be smaller and you'd still get diffraction. Um, yet then when the radio waves hit the hill, because the hill is the same size as them or smaller, they spread out, which is good news for anyone living just after a hill, if they want to listen to the radio, yeah? Because the radio waves still get to them, because of diffraction. Okay, so question that I'm... Oh, I just got a new coffee supporter. Oh, that's so lovely. That's maybe someone watching right now. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, yeah, very proud of this question. What do you reckon? So now I'm showing you, we've got microwaves and they've got a wavelength of one meter. How do they behave when they hit this 100 meter hill? So I've got you four options, only one of them is correct. So can you explain <coughs> why each of the others is wrong? Just to clarify, right? These radio waves have a wavelength of 100 meters and the hill is 100 meters. So because it's a similar size to the hill, um, they diffract, okay? Which one of these is correct then? So do microwaves that are one meter wavelength, do they behave just the same way as radio waves? Um, diffracting down into the valley? Is it B, where the microwaves hit the hill and most of them that are absorbed or bounce back and only the ones that aren't hitting the hill get by? Um, is it C, where we've got a tiny little bit of diffraction happening and the waves have spread out a bit as they've got over the hill? Or is it D, where we've got a tiny bit of diffraction happening and the waves are all the same size? Oh, my day's been made by my new coffee supporter. I think I, I, think I need to work rainbow glasses into every lesson. I'm sure, I'm sure it's not just that. People on Facebook were struggling with this one. People on Facebook were struggling so much that they were getting silly and making up the answer E and saying that it was E because they were feeling very uncomfortable about their 
uh, inability to do the question. So don't worry if you can't get this one. If, you, if you're struggling, maybe look at which one you think is definitely wrong. Okay, should we go for it? So A is definitely wrong um, because the hill is huge compared to the wavelength. So we wouldn't see very much diffraction. If you're finding it confusing, just instead of hill, just say gap in your head. If the gap was really big and the wavelength was really small, then it'd be like light going through a door. You wouldn't get any diffraction. So it's definitely not A. <coughs> um, B is, is pretty close, but there's always a tiny little bit of diffraction, right? C is not right. Did you notice that the wavelength had changed? And wave, so the waves are more spread out when they go over the hill. Wavelength does not change when waves spread out. Wavelength isn't affected by diffraction. Um, so the answer is D, because we've got a teeny tiny little bit of diffraction um, and the wavelength hasn't changed. Splendid. Right. Um, <laughs> so to finish, I've got um, a question which I spent a long time researching and got really excited by because it's just a very cool true fact. The question is also uh, incredibly difficult, but I hope you enjoy at least <laughs> as you're struggling with it. The fact that it is a true fact and kind of adorable. So here we go to end the lesson. <clears throat> the sound of an owl's hoot has a wavelength of roughly 43 centimetres. Depends on the breed, obviously. A sparrow's tweet has a wavelength of 14 centimetres. Both birds sing in a forest where the trees are over 30 centimetres wide on average. Which bird's sound travels most easily through the forest and why? Come on. So this is true. One of these birds' sounds travels further and it is because of its wavelength. So picture the trees as objects that the sound has to diffract around or not which which hoot or tweet is going to diffract the most and travel furthest through the forest. I'll give you a couple of minutes and then I'll, a couple of seconds and then I'll show you a diagram. So the answer is, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it's the owl because its sound wave is large compared to the tree, so we'll diffract around it. So again, if you if instead of tree you say gap, we've got a small gap and a large wavelength, so there's going to be the most diffraction. Here's a diagram to kind of help you get it. It's basically like this, but now we have to imagine that, that the hill is a tree and the sound wave is coming from both sides. So it looks like this, okay? Um, so the sound wave gets the tree, so here we've got the, the, the wavelength of the hoot is about the same as the tree, so it gets to the tree and it, yeah, it diffracts, diffracts around it on both sides. Whereas the tweet, the short wavelength tweet, would do this, because it's, it, it's, the gap is, the tree is too big, yeah. Um, except that diagram is slightly wrong, what have I just not bothered to do? Why is the diffraction tweet diagram not quite right? Come on, you should be just seeing it now. Three, two, one. I couldn't be bothered to put everything diffract, every, all waves diffract a tiny bit, don't they, around everything. So there should be a teeny tiny little bit of diffraction, but I couldn't be bothered because it takes ages. Right, and uh, on the hoot tweet debate, yes, that is true. Yeah, wait. Owls hoots travel further through the forest. Uh, if you don't remember anything else from today's lesson, isn't that lovely? That is the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for joining me. As usual, I uh, just really love these lessons. Um, 
I have got a Facebook post up where you can say hello if you want to. So I'm just going to go to Facebook now to see if anybody has said hello. I know that Tiger and Bird and Bastian have. Hello. Um, yeah, if you want to spot me, it's in the about section. I always see this. I don't, I don't know where it is. Maybe it's there. I don't know. But if you go to my about section on YouTube, there is a link to where you can support me. You can send me £5 a month and I will send you some uh, what I can now call diffraction glasses uh, and I'll send you Theatre of Science magazine whenever it comes out. The next magazine is, I say it's overdue. I mean, I said I'll, it'll just be sent to you when I've written it, but it is feeling overdue. It's just going to be really big. It's on weeds and I've, I've made like weed dobble and written a comic as usual. It's, it's, it's going to be a very big one. Um, but yes, it is, it is taking a long time. This, sometimes they just come out and sometimes they take ages. Um, oh, seven comments. Here we go. Let's have a look. So yeah, if you are supporting me, then thank you very much. Uh, I'll let you know when the weed magazine is on its way. And if you're not supporting me, then you will get the mould issue when you sign up. It's got Choose Your Own Adventure and it's got a beautiful comic that my husband illustrates about how penicillin was discovered, like the true full story. And I'll send you a biodegradable plastic bag so that you can grow your own mould. <laughs> right, who's here? Uh, oh, Sky and Evie are here. Hello, Sky and Evie. Brilliant. And Tiger and Bird. And Bastion. And, oh, that's nice. People are talking to each other, I think. Right, Sky and Evie. Well, thank you for saying hello. And then uh, I need to go and talk to Erin because they got confused. Tiger and Bird. Oh, it's Tiger and Bird. Oh, no way. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you told me that. Oh, and if it's you that's joined, then um, um, that lets me know that I need to put two sets of diffraction glasses in. Ah, oh, thanks, guys. How kind. Okay. Yes. Right, I'm going to go because in half an hour I'm teaching the All Ages Coral Reefs lesson on Facebook. So I'm going to go and um, get set up for that. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you next week for oh, the sound lesson. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bye.